Okay. And, and I received all of those images, but yeah. I couldn't do anything with those images. Yeah. 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 I didn't. But this, we'll do this systematic uh, impact of uh, racism and inequality in America. Okay, okay you, you ready Let's to do that? that? Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the systemic impact, the impact of systemic racism and inequality in America. And we're fortunate to have with, with us to talk about the systemic impact of racism and inequality in America, Dr. E. Kelly Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Sanford, let me welcome you to the show this morning and tell you how delighted we are to uh, have you. But I could also say that uh, our audience is quite familiar with you, and there's no real reason for us to take a long time in terms of recognizing you. But uh, let's see if we can uh, touch those few who might not know you. Okay. And, and so let's have you to uh, start off by giving us some information in reference to your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of leading you to us this morning, and then we'll talk about the impact of systemic racism and, in, and inequality in America. Well, thank you very much, and again, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. These are always exciting times to discuss issues and concerns related to America. Mm -hmm. My name again is Dr. E. Kelly Sanford, and I am a professor of sociology at Tennessee State University. I did my PhD at Howard University in Washington, D.C., a postdoc degree at Penn State in State College, Pennsylvania. Proud to say a product of North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina. But in, with that, I also went to the Institute for Social Research at the University of Michigan while I was working on my doctorate degree. I um, was the director of Africana Studies at the University of Montana, as well as the chair of the Department of Sociology at Austin Peay State University. And I've also had an opportunity to do um, work at Harvard University and their W.E.B. Du Bois Research Center that I think is very apropos to what we are talking about today. One of my specializations was in that of political sociology. And so I think that interconnection of what I did at the Du Bois Center at Harvard, as well as one of my specializations in political sociology, is very much connected with the discussion today on the systemic aspect of racism in America today. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Sanford, uh, <coughs> when we talk about the systemic impact of uh, racism, the impact of systemic racism and inequality in America, uh, let's start talking as a sociologist. Yes. Talk about what you mean when you say systemic, uh, okay. because I think that it has a real impact upon inequality and racism, but at the same time, many members of our audience might not understand the sociological okay. view of uh, systemic. Okay. Well, by systemic, what I'm trying to indicate to you is that culture is almost very similar to the air that we breathe. And when you think in terms of uh, the history of America, the systemic aspect comes and reflects from 244 years of African enslavement here in America, 81 years of Jim Crow laws that led into Reconstruction, then into a civil rights movement. So when you think in terms of systemic, that's when our social structure, meaning our society, became very much institutionalized in its discrimination toward another group based on race. And as a result of it becoming institutionalized, meaning by law, Supreme Court justice deciding that one group of people should be treated in a certain way indifferent than another person or another group, or systemic in the way that one group of people should not have the right to vote. 
that another group of people should not have a right to read, write, and just learn in education, that institution of education. So that means that it's ingrained in the very fabric, the very culture in which we live in. And as a result of that, that manifests itself from one generation to the next generation to the next generation, even into the present. Some of the same ramifications of what happened earlier are still very present today. And that's why it becomes systemic because it's very much a part of the very fabric of the American society, the very ethos. In other, it's, in other words, it's the core yes. of everything that has to do with race yes. in America. And so no matter what, you you talk about slavery, yes. you talk about separation, segregation, mm -hmm. except, all of them will have an impact, and it all goes back to the very, very fact that it, this is part of what? The core of the system itself. Is that, uh, would that be the, the correct? That, 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 uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. And when we think in terms of 1776 with the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, where it talks about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, mm -hmm. when we look at that date, 1776, Look at when slavery started, 1619 here in America, but it started even earlier than that in other countries. So we're talking about 100 years of institutionalized in the very fabric of the culture mm -hmm. by that time where laws were made. Okay, well, so let's take this first commercial break and then yes. we'll come back. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. From okay. Here. Just want well, to continue. Yeah, we can continue with that. Um, since it's Do we just left Dr. King, I'm bringing a little bit of that yeah, up. Yeah, and, talk, and, yeah, 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 that, yeah. Because that, 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 that's why I kind of stopped at the reconstruction of uh -huh. the civil rights movement. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I guess anyone looking with okay, it. Okay, well, what I'll do, I'll simply announce the topic itself okay. and then uh, allow you to continue your discussion and okay. pick up where you want to okay. for the next eight minutes. And okay. then we'll have that break and then we'll come back with that 10 minutes. Segment. Okay. All okay. Right. All yeah. right. I'm sorry that. Uh, I knew you had to be out there somewhere. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> out there sitting in the car. As a matter of fact, I stayed out there so long I was at the thing reading the doorbell, and then I looked in the mirror because you can see yourself at uh -huh. the door, and I had on another pair of glasses, uh -huh. and I work out, and I said, oh, I forgot to put my glasses. I went back to the car and got them That's and came glass. back uh -huh. and rang the doorbell <laughs> some more. So a young man finally came mm -hmm. to the door. Yes, yes ma'am. Oh. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E. Kelly Sanford from Tennessee State University, and he's given us some information in reference to the impact of systemic racism and inequality in America. Let's pick it up from that uh, perspective, uh, Doctor, and have you to uh, simply expound okay. sociologically upon uh, that as an issue today. Absolutely. So I try to make it look as if it's a part of the very fabric of the American society and, and how racism was so very much defined within the culture of, of looking, taking a social construct of people that are human and saying that they are something less than that. And that re after Reconstruction led into the Civil Rights Movement. And we know that there were movements from the time of Harriet Tubman leading throughout the early history up until the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And as we have this particular day that we are having this conversation, we've just celebrated the life and legacy of, of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And when we think about civil rights that had to change a lot of the laws, a lot of the actions that had been there since slavery leading through Reconstruction. And we think in, in terms of Dr. King and that social movement that took place, they galvanized not only people in the United States, but in the world to try to bring about change. But in that same line, I would also like to think about um, Supreme Court Justice that became Thurgood Marshall. Mm -hmm. And at the time, how he broke down segregation laws that had been in prison within the very fabric of society that made it systemic um, as far as race relations were in, here in society in which we lived in. We can't have a conversation about that unless we talk about Adam Clayton Powell, mm -hmm. Andrew Young, 
the great Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois that preceded all of them in, in his classic book, The Souls of Black Folks, where he talks about this systemic type of racism that had existed in the society, when he had other pieces of the Philadelphia Negro, when he talked about the education of, when it, the term he used at that time, the Negro education, where he talked about people had to have this idea about trying to develop themselves into the talented tent because there was this type of a racism that existed in society that kept people from having an opportunity. So, the, the, so it became so institutionalized in the very fabric. It broke down the family from slavery to that president of, of, the, of the 1960s. It broke down opportunities in education. It broke down economic opportunities. Even if we look back in slavery where slavery was ended and, and they always talked about the, um, the, 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 the 70 acres and a mule, uh, that, that, wasn't, that didn't come through fruition for groups of people. Opportunities just were not there. So when we look at these differences that were developed within the very fabric of the society, those differences continue to persist. Even as Dr. Du Bois said, the problem of the 19th century was the problem of the color line that persisted in the 20th century, and now we are in the 21st century and we can still see some of those discriminatory factors. Now I know a lot of the people in the listening audience would say, well look, we're just getting ready to end two terms of success of an African American president. I was thinking president. about that. that yes. <coughs> speak to that. Yes, yes. of an African American <laughs> president. Or many people could have grandparents that, or parents and great grandparents that are living today that could express, well, when I drove through the South, I did, could not stop and have a place to stay at a hotel or a motel. And now we have that. We have our opportunities to enter into any institution of higher education that we can get into and have hopefully equal access. But given all of that, we still see a lot of disparities based on the past history that still exists today. And like that glass ceiling that has been broken with President Obama, we can still see the embedded nature of prejudice, discrimination, and racism that exists. And this past election that we're getting ready to have with um, President-elect Trump has shown a whole lot of people felt disenfranchised because truly of industrialization and postmodernism, but they looked at it as if those successes of minority groups and women, I throw them in the, in the whole conversation of a minority group as well, has taken their place. And so therefore we can see a lot of the racism that has resurged as a result of administration that you would like to define as very positive. However, the systemic racism that exists hundreds of years ago 